Hi, in this video, we will start learning about visibility. Visibility is a very important, uh, important topic in aviation. Why? Because if you are flying with visual flight rules, VFR conditions, we must be able to see and recognize things visibly. So visibility is very important in aviation also. Okay, for local flying and all, we usually use VFR conditions and for that, visibility is a must for recognizing runway, for recognizing runway markings, for recognizing apron and all. For everything, we need visibility, right? So, visibility is important. And what is visibility in aviation? What is it? It is the greatest distance up to which we can see. That's the measurement of visibility, the greatest distance up to which we can see. And in our language, in pilot language, it can be like this. The greatest distance at which a black object can be seen in a uh, bright environment. The greatest distance at which a black object rises from the ground can be seen from a bright bl uh, background. That is the visibility. Or it is the distance at which maximum distance from which we can see a, light, a lighted object of thousand candela why we use that unit candela is the unit of light you know so thousand candela that is the standard unit thousand candela of light can be seen from can be seen and recognized from a unlit background that means no other lighting is there only one light of thousand candela is there the maximum distance from which we can see and identify that light. That is called the visibility, a range of visibility. Okay. So, during daytime, this is measured by watching the runway markings. From where we can see the runway, from what distance we, we are able to see and identify the runway markings that, that can be used. In the night time, we can use runway lightings and all. Runway lighting is there from the, the uh, visibility can be uh, termed as the maximum distance from which the runway lighting can be easily seen. And one important DGCA question, what are the devices used to measure visibility? One is transmissometer. Then scopograph. And what is used to measure the a runway visibility that is called RVR or runway visual range range assessor RVR runway visual range assessor okay these are the devices used to measure visibility okay transmissometer scopograph and RVR Runway visual range assessor. Okay. RVR uh, is announced when the runway visibility is less than 1500 meter or 1 1.5 kilometers. If the visibility is less than 1500 meter, RVR is reported. Then, what are the causes of low visibility? Causes low visibility. One haze. What is haze? Haze is a milky appearance of atmosphere. It can be a mixture of dust particles, smoke, and all. Uh, we, uh, we can see the atmosphere as a milky, uh, as a, uh, translucent layer. That is called a haze. Okay. In haze, usually the visibility will be less than 5,000 meters. Okay, 5,000 meters or even lesser. Then comes smoke haze. What is smoke haze? In industrial regions and where the smoke is more means when um, somebody is lighting something crackers and all 
at that time the smoke will be present in atmosphere and the visibility will be reduced to less than 5000 meter and what is the uh, reason for that carbon dioxide present in the smoke that is when, when it is hot it will rise up bringing the soot particles also along with it that gives a hazy appearance to the atmosphere and that, is, that also causes less visibility and that is called smoke haze okay then comes dust haze dust haze actually this is an aviation hazard also dust haze dust haze occurs when very small particles of dust are brought up to the air and it can go up to 6 to 8 kilometers actually more than 6 to 8 kilometers it can go higher and it, it can go up to a very large uh, horizontal extent also that causes what? that also causes less visibility and it is all due to dust particles that is a health hazard and an aviation hazard also and then comes fog what is fog? fog is actually a cloud in ground level we can say it as like that, stratus cloud in ground level fog is something like uh, water vapor is there and it is also giving a hazy appearance that is called a fog we can see fog in northern India and in parts of West Bengal, Assam and all during winter season and then comes the smog 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 equal to fog plus smoke it happens in places where fog occurs along with huge pollution also in cities like Delhi and Mumbai during fog that fog disperses smoke also industrial smoke also industrial smoke will also be carried along with the fog and that will be staying suspended in the air that is a health hazard because when we inhale it we can get respiratory issues then comes dust storm what is a dust storm we studied about dust haze apart from that dust storm is also there dust storm when storm like uh, activities occur cyclones occur it can take dust along with that and it and dust storms will be uh, giving a visibility of less than 5000 meter also okay so that is also an aviation hazard then comes sea spray sea spray when the sea is violent when cyclonic activities are there thunderstorm activity is there then what happens is sea from sea uh, the sand, uh, salt particles and water vapor and water along with uh, uh, some other uh, contents in the uh, sea can rise up in the form of a fog or spray it, it will be very moist very wet and it will be covering a region where the sea is there and it also causes less visibility and this usually affects when the airports are near to the sea it can cause serious other issues also because it contains salt particles particles also that salt particles can cause corrosion to the aircraft parts also then comes a rain rain or precipitation rain Right. this is an important cause of less visibility we usually hear like due to less visibility due to rain planes have been diverted to some alternate airports right so when there is moderate rain moderate rain then visibility will be around one to three kilometers that means thousand to three thousand meters when there is heavy rain it will be 1000 meters or lesser than 1000 meters when there is snowfall 
then it will be less than 1000 meters. When shower is moderate, rain shower is moderate, then it will be 1 to 3 kilometers visibility we can expect. When it is heavily raining, then 1000 meters of visibility can be expected. When there is snowfall also, then we can expect less than 1000 meters of visibility. Then comes vertical and slant visibility. For example, there is an airport, okay, and there is a layer of fog. Okay, this is the runway region. Okay, so fog is a layer of fog is there. If an aircraft is coming from this side, suppose the pilot can easily see the runway because the layer of fog is very thin. Okay, this much is the layer of fog. He can easily see the runway. But what happens is when he is about to touch down the runway, okay. He has come like this and he has to land. When he comes like this, then the visibility will be very less because he has to see through a larger section of air where the fog is present. This is called as land visibility and this is called the vertical visibility. Okay. Suppose even if the vertical visibility is good, it doesn't mean like land visibility also will be good. It is caused when the layer of haze or fog is there and visibility is less. Okay. Then comes some types of fog. What are the types of fog? It is an important uh, portion actually. One is radiation fog. radiation fog. It is actually the stratus cloud in the air surface. When the surface of the earth is very cold and moist air is passing through the uh, cold surface, there is a little wind also, calm wind is also there. And due to nocturnal cooling of earth, earth is losing temperature, continuously earth is losing the temperature from the ground level. See, this is the ground level. The air adjacent to this ground level gets cooled, gets cooled below the dew point and it causes suspended particles of water vapor to appear. That is called the fog. There are some conditions to be satisfied for the formation of radiation fog. One is clear sky. Why clear sky is needed? Then only the terrestrial radiation will be more and the earth will lose heat energy and then only the earth can cool up by itself. Okay. Then comes calm wind. Calm wind. If heavy wind is there, it will simply blow up, blow, blow over the land and no fog can happen. And usually seen in winter season. It is a winter hazard actually. Usually seen in winter. And then the most important part is high relative humidity because fog itself is a so, uh, suspension of water particles for that of course we need high humidity also if these conditions satisfy calm wind clear sky night time winter and high relative humidity then fog can occur actually a fog is a delicate balance of these factors so even if these things uh, can uh, is if the, the if these things are prevailing we can't guarantee like fog can ha happen also there is a delicate balance between this and this is usually seen in northwest of india bihar odisha bengal assam etc okay these are the places where we can find radiation fog 
during winter time this is a winter hazard it can ha it can cause accidents in roads also when the visibility is very less okay then comes advection fog okay what is advection fog when warm moist air is moving through a cold region warm moist air is moving through a cold region in um, uh, radiation fog it is not like that warm moist air is not moving through the cold region it is there itself and it is cool from the adjacent layer of ground in advection fog it is warm moist air is moving through a cold surface it can be over sea or over land uh, 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 radiation fog occurs only over land and this occurs over sea or over land okay when this happens some heat energy is transferred towards the land or the sea causing the foam to build up okay that is called the advection fog then comes steaming fog when super cooled air mass super cooled mass of air with moisture is moving over warm sea surface air mass is so very cold and the sea is warm in advection fog warm air is there the sea or the land is cool but here in steaming fog warm air mass warm moist air mass is moving over sorry cold air mass is moving over warm sea surface what happens is evaporation causes from the sea and the particles uh, form nucleuses of nuclei of water vapor and that causes less visibility means a, li a little bit condensation will be there and fog fog started starts um, building up then that is called a steaming fog this we can see over poles polar region when cold air hits over the water mass or the sea this smoke like steam starts coming from the sea this also have a co uh, causes less visibility but it is actually not a big hazard to aviation why because it is not so high in vertical extent okay and one another fog is there that is frontal fog which occurs uh, near to the fronts what is a front that we will learn in the chapter of winds okay then comes fog dispersal how to disperse fog during world war second we learned like temperature should be less relative humidity is high and uh, other factors we have learned but we can change only one thing we can reduce relative humidity so what we can do is increase the temperature during world war second they used to fire using gas and uh, uh, petroleum products to increase the temperature of a region to disperse fog actually it is a very expensive procedure and is now not at all used now what is used is the injection of hygroscopic nuclei hygroscopic nuclei actually what is that it is simply spraying of water water to the fog small droplets of water will cause attaching of super cool uh, 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 cause attaching of water vapor uh, present in atmosphere in the fog and that will become bigger larger nuclei and that suspended water particles will settle down so that method is called injecting of hygroscopic water nuclei to the fog and that can easily bring down fog that is how fog is dispersed and that is all about visibility and now you can start attending your topic wise exam on visibility okay thank you